So in this video, we're going to be going over the best indicator in TradingView and it's the best because I did code it myself and it was actually something I needed versus something that was already there. So as usual, before getting the video, a quick reminder that all the best tools will be linked in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. So the indicator we're going to be going over, it's this over here. These are all value that are really important in trading. And normally to get these value, I have to go on a different website and it just takes time. And when you're looking at a bunch of stuff and everything is happening pretty quickly in the market, it becomes hard to actually get this information in time or sometimes you just miss it. So by having it on my chart, it's just easy to have a simple process. So I'll go over the values that are over here and why each of them are quite important. So let's go back to GME. So the first thing we have is going to be volume percent. So I want to know if the stock is just trading above its average 10 day volume or it's trading the same thing. If it's trading the same thing, it's probably not something I want to really be trading because there's probably no news. It's not in play. So it most likely going to be an avoid. So this is going to be volume percent on the daily chart. So if we go to the daily chart over here, it's going to tell me that now it's trading a lot of volume. If we go to something like SPY over here, it's going to tell me it's only 53%. It's quite low. So there's a different way of seeing this value or gauging if it's important or not. And it's going to be time of day. If it's something like 10 or 11 a.m. and we already have traded above 50% or above 60%, you're going to know that the stock is in play because the market only been open for an hour, an hour and a half, and we already traded more than half of what we do normally. But right now it's 345 and we can see that it only traded about 50%. So we definitely know that this is not in play today. There's no panic. There's nothing going on. So it's not going to be something you're looking to trade. We can also see that the ATR is quite contracted, only 35% of its average ATR. And the ATR over here is going to be based on 14 days. And you can also customize it if there's a preference sometime on the 10 day, if you're looking at shorter moves but you can go back to the 14 day, which is more the traditional value. So ATR 35% only. So it's very contracted. That means the normal ATR in dollar value over here, what we have, it's 5.94. And if you want to double check this value, you can always go to something like Finviz and just check it up over here. It's going to say ATR. This is for GME. And over here, if we go back to GME, it's going to be the same thing. So what we had, it was 1.33, but we have over here 1.33. So let's go back to SPY. So as I mentioned with these value, what's going to be important is the volume percent. It's low. ATR is also low in terms of range on that day. So that means that today was not a day in play, but that could also mean that tomorrow, because the range was so contracted today, it could give some good level to work with. And this could be an opportunity for the next day because sometimes you're scanning through chart and you're going to just see that it already moved more than one ATR today. So the chance that the following day has a big move is going to be quite low versus a day that had a compressed range. Then it's going to have a chance to have a big range day the following day. So this is a good way of seeing or looking at this value. Low volume day, low volume range could potentially mean just tomorrow could be a big day because it did nothing today. For example, if we go to GME over here on that specific day, we can see visually that it traded above its normal range. But just having these values tell you, hey, it already traded maybe 200% or 300% of its range. Probably the following day, which was this day, it just did absolutely nothing. And today it did pretty much nothing. So maybe we get another tight day and then we have a nice breakout. But these values are going to be able to tell you a bit more precisely, you know, what's bigger than normal and what's not. So the next value that we have on this indicator over here, it's ATR. So this is the dollar value. And sometimes it helps you gauge how much you should be risking on a stock. If your stock or your stop is something around like 50 cents or 70 cents, you're risking half an ATR. So your best case scenario is going to be a one to one. So you're risking one to make one if the stock doesn't have some crazy news or anything like that. And then the next thing that we have over here are these are values. So if we go to SPY, just to make this simple, 
we have over here that the long value. So if you're looking for one ATR move or more, the value would have been around the 522 and 39. That's you can put it on the intraday It's not going to change anything. But you say, OK, if I was long this stock, the, the long target should have been at least the 522. This should have been the number 532, 39. If I'm looking for a short from the higher day, on any given day, I should look for at least a one ATR move. So my target should be something around the 512. And we can see that it didn't do anything today. So both of these were invalidated. But overall, this is kind of a good way to just see how things are moving or how things are trending. So I'm going to cover one last point before really breaking down the indicator and the code, because this is quite important because you want to know how to use something or how to gauge if it's going to help your trading or not. What I have over here is a different scenario. This is going to be a fresh catalyst. So BLTR had earnings yesterday night. It made a big move in the after hour. So today there's going to be a fresh catalyst in place. So you can expect to have a lot more volume. So you can see that 300% of the average volume ATR it only move 110%. So this is not a big move versus the volume. So for something with an absolute fresh catalyst, what you could expect is going to be sometimes double or triple the volume. So you can also expect your ATR to be something like double or triple. So this could be a really good idea of a target or where to really risk and how much you can expect from a move, depending on how much the volume is versus its normal day. So if you would have took a position, for example, on a reversion on the five minute, you could have risked maybe the higher day, which 22.12 versus 22.71 is going to be 60 cents, around 59 cents. So this is already going to be half your ATR. But because we have a fresh catalyst and we can also see that the volume was really, really high over here on the open, you can probably expect something normally around the two ATR. And that could have give you a still a 60 cent risk for a $2 reward or $2.22. So these are all going to be little things that you're going to have to play yourself, right? Is there news, fresh news? If there's no news on this particular stock, if there's no news, why would you expect it to move more than an ATR if we're above an important range or below? For example, that we have SMCI when it had this big move over here, you can expect that it's breaking out of an important level. It's going to be a trend day technically. So maybe I can expect two ATR or maybe 2.5 if the volume happens and we can see that it had a lot of volume. So as you're in the trade, you can sometimes adjust your stop or have a better way of targeting your position. So now let's go to the code. So we can click on settings over here and I created a few things so you can have it at the top left. If you prefer, you can also have it at the top right. You can have it like in many different position on your chart. You just have to select it over here. You can also do something which is move to existing pan below if you wanted to have it in your volume, but it creates like a default or an issue over here. You can see that it just adds another layer, which is not ideal. So that's why I prefer to have it in the existing pan above. And I like to put it over here at the bottom left. I think it makes more sense. And to make sure it doesn't go with the chart or the volume or anything like that, I like to just add a bigger uh, margin at the bottom. I just think it's better and it's going to be an easy way to see your things. And you can't really do anything about these marker. These are just going to be on the chart sometimes and it is what it is. So I hope this video helps and it explained why this indicator is helpful. If it does, like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.